Hey, Coachella Valley, and welcome to Live with Your Chamber. I'm your host, Katie Stice, CEO at the Ranch and Raj Chamber of Commerce. And today was the first day that I could wear my puffy monogrammed vest. And I'm not going to lie, I was very excited about the weather change just a little bit. Um, if you're watching this, please comment below. Let us know where you're watching from. And if you have questions, please feel free to leave them. Even if we don't get to them live, we'll be able to get back later. But today's a really exciting interview. It's with Guide Dogs of the Desert. I know that you know them. I know that you love them because we all do. <laughs> please be volunteer coordinator and Jennifer Heggie Dogs of the desert. Welcome to the show. Hello. Hi. So Amy, let's start with you and talk about the need for volunteers right now and what folks might look forward to doing if they do volunteer with you. Okay. Well, thanks. A lot of what we do with our puppies um, involves our volunteer puppy raisers and they would take a puppy into their home at age nine weeks up until they're about 22 months of age. And that is what we call their grade school and high school training. Um, since we are school, we do like to keep everything in the school format. And that type of schooling in the home is all about socialization, getting lots of love, going out in the world and getting new experiences. But we do offer canine classes for those puppies here on our campus that uh, the puppy raisers can bring their puppies to. Oh, good. It sounds like it would be so much fun. I mean, what a special way to spend your time. Um, but let's also talk about how that transition works for when they might need to go ahead and bring that puppy back so that it can do really its job that it's going to be training to do. Absolutely. So at about 18 to 22 uh, months of age, the puppy um, comes back to our campus for its it formal guide work training, which is its college education. And it's really when our training department uh, teaches the dogs how to do that formal guide dog work. Um, and about six months to nine months later, we will have them uh, custom matched with a student of ours to be paired as a guide team if that dog graduates. Um, as a guide dog because it is one of the highest um, levels of training that a dog can receive in service work. Wow, that's incredible. And what about folks who, I know we were talking about this right before we went live, if they're kind of struggling with, you know, you're bonding with the animal and then you have to kind of make that transition, um, what type of advice would you have for someone? I mean, I feel like we're all dog lovers at the end of the day. I know you guys are if you work for Kind Dogs of the Desert um, and you bond with that animal. Can you tell us a little bit about how you can help make that transition? Absolutely. Um, I often thought that myself, like how can you raise a puppy and give it back? But the difference is in the mindset that you start out with going into the process. You uh, know that what you're doing is for the greater good of somebody else to really change their life potentially by providing a guide dog for them, allowing them mobility and freedom and independence that they wouldn't already have. And one of our partners who has been doing this for 20 years now told me it's like raising children you raise them up and you send them off to college and out into the world and hopefully you've done a great enough job with them that they can go out and be very successful and that's what we think of with the puppies you raise them up you send them off to college here at Grand Dogs of the Desert and they go out to do the the work that they were always intended to and you have that wonderful feeling of knowing you've done something for somebody that is a goes beyond words. And um, I think even our family that have small children and have done this have said it's been very rewarding in teaching their kids the value of giving back because they understand, yes, we love this puppy and who can't love a puppy, you know? <laughs> but, um, with all those wet kisses and, uh, and snuggles that you get with a puppy, you know all along from the get-go, you're doing this it's for something that's bigger than yourself. And once you get a puppy back, you can absolutely find if you get another one. <laughs> <laughs> and is that common? I mean, do you have people who, you know, just continually do this? And do you recommend one puppy at a time? Or can people do more than that? Well, um, 
we do have many people that repeat puppy raising. Like I said, we have a family that has been doing this for 20 years. Um, so several that are in the, the teens of years, you know, 14, 17 years, things like that. So definitely for sure, um, you want to repeat the process. And um, second of all, I think by repeating the process too, you never have to go through that stage of where the dog gets older and you have to deal with that as a pet owner. Um, and so you always have that sweet puppy. Um, and as far as doing two puppies at a time, that would be um, a big undertaking. And um, I think even our most experienced puppy raisers would tell you that it, doing one at a time would be the best way to go. <laughs> Yeah. Good to know. And Amy, I put your um, information right on the screen for those of you who are out there watching and you might be interested in learning more. Amy and I have known each other for a long time. She is wonderful. Send her over an email, inquire a little bit about it. And I mean, how many volunteers are you looking for right now? Do you just always take volunteer applications or do you have a certain number? Um, well, right now we have uh, 44 puppy raiser volunteers, but we've got 7 to 12 puppies coming by the end of the year. So I need to find more puppies. Um, but we're always looking for volunteers for the campus as well to work in our nursery, to work in the kennel, walking dogs, um, holding the brand new puppies, uh, working in our admin office, um, helping Jennifer with uh, fundraising and events. Um, right now, we do have a volunteer application on our website that you could fill out and put the areas of expertise that you would like to offer to guide dogs in the desert. I love that. It sounds like there's almost a little something for everyone, which is great. If someone, you know, can't bring the puppy in their house, it sounds like they can still get really involved and close to them, walking them. I think that is such a great thing. Even if families were, say, at home looking for something really just constructive to do with their time together, uh, this would be a really great thing to do. So I'm going to challenge anybody who's out here watching, um, sign up, take a look, see how you can help. Guide Dogs is amazing. And speaking Speaking of those puppies that you say are on their way, Jennifer, you were talking a little bit before we went live about a puppy shower coming up. Tell us a little bit about what that is. Right. So um, I will tell you that the reason I have my mask on is because I'm sharing an office right now with one of our puppy raisers, hoping to have a sneak guest appearance from one of our guide dogs in training, Nancy. So her puppy raiser is in the background, keeping her sort of um, in, a, in, in a timeout, let's just put it that way. But um, what I wanted to touch on is the fact that we do have puppies coming to Guide Dogs of the Desert, which means we will be doing a virtual puppy shower. Um, we did this once before and it worked tremendously well for the organization because everybody gets to see the uh, the puppies, which is what everybody loves. And like Amy mentioned, which is what we're looking for is um, volunteer puppy raisers. So you will get to see them playing. You'll get to see our needs here at Guide Dogs of the Desert, what we need for the puppies in the form of colors, leashes, blankets, bowls, that sort of thing, even down to dog food. You know, I mean, right yeah. now, we are open to any and every donation that anybody is willing to contribute. So um, that's that coming up uh, probably in the middle of November. Well, when it does, let us know. We would love to help promote that, get the word out. Okay. And speaking of needs, you know, um, one of the reasons we have this live show and we bring it to the community is so that people at home can really understand that nonprofits are still providing these essential services to the community, that those needs have not stopped. Right. Um, yet sometimes some of our fundraisers have, you know, we've had to stop doing them. They've gone by the wayside for safety reasons. Um, how can people help support you right now, Jennifer? So the most important thing to remember when it comes to Guide Dogs of the Desert is we are considered essential. Because of the work we do, we can't stop training the dogs. We have to continue that process. The dogs aren't going to understand what's going on. And also our visually impaired individuals who were raising the dogs for and training the dogs for, they still need those dogs. So that's why we're here in our offices and not in our homes. Um, Amy's in her office. I'm in a puppy raiser's office who happens to be staff as well. Um, and we are continuing training on a daily basis. 
Um, our trainers do go out in the community. We still have to continue to fundraise. Um, we have dogs in the kennel right now that are in training. And um, the way we have sort of morphed the ability to place these dogs into homes is instead of training on campus, we're actually located in Whitewater. Not a lot of people know that. Um, we are right in the heart of the windmills. We have 13 acres where our students come and live with us on campus while they are matched with their guide dogs. So um, it's a big sort of college-like operation here. I grew up in the desert. I didn't even know that until, you know, when I started working for guide dogs of the desert. So um, because of that, because we need to continue the work, we're doing in-home trainings. And mm -hmm. in-home trainings are kind of expensive. Um, we have one that we're doing in Big Bear, we just wrapped up. We're doing one in San Marcos. I believe there's one slated for the Coachella Valley. So we are going to continue to do the great work that we do here at Guide Dogs in the Desert, which means donations are essential. Um, our donors have to fly in some situations. Um, we're doing a training in Bo Boise. Um, so, so our flight, food, hotel, and all of the socially distanced masks, you know, all the, um, equipment that goes into being extremely safe during these times has to be in place for our trainers and for the student as well. So it's it's expensive right now for us to operate. You guys do amazing work. And I'm just going to encourage people who are out there watching. Another way you can support Guides Out Dogs of the Desert is share this video, help get the word out. And if you're able to donate and to help out, especially with the circumstances of today, do. Their uh, website is right on the screen, scrolling below. Um, give them a chance, go help out. Uh, there's a lot that can be done um, and we would all really appreciate it. So I have two more questions for you guys. Um, if someone is out there who is maybe finding themselves um, needing a guide dog, what is the process to go through um, to possibly um, have one? Uh, the process is actually fairly simple. It starts with an application. And um, thankfully, our website is scrolling across the bottom of the screen. So you go to gddca.org. And right at the top of the screen, there's a button to click, click on that will take you to our application to apply for a guide dog. Um, there is a list. We have both Labrador Retrievers and Standard Poodles, and actually just two German Shepherds in the program right now. But our focus is Labradors and Poodles. So um, we are one of uh, very few guide dog schools that do Standard Poodles because of the hypoallergenic qualities of the dog. So the waiting list for Poodles is a little bit longer than the waiting list for Labrador Retrievers. Um, but you work with your doctors in your area and um, our admissions department screens the application and they will get back to you. So it's it's um, it, it's fairly simple. Just go online and fill out that form. That's great. You know, when we posted um, this broadcast that it was coming up, there were people that were saying it might be time for me. So I'm really glad that you covered that so they could get that started. And my last question for both of you, Amy, we'll start with you. Why do you do what you do? Quite honestly, I, I started because I have a love for, for dogs. And then once I got here and I saw the larger picture and saw the first graduation where people actually, uh, students received dogs um, free of charge. Um, and then what it took for the dog to be sponsored, the dog to be raised, what the staff was doing, and all of this was at no charge to this individual whose life was being changed. I actually saw the, the process before my eyes and I realized this is the first time I've worked for a nonprofit where I've actually seen the money at work and the results of that money at work. And it was phenomenal and I wouldn't want to be any place else. We might have lost Katie. <laughs> I think we might have. <laughs> there she oh, is. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Was it me that froze? All I saw was little little spinning. I thought, oh no, you guys no. are gonna have to run the show on your own. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we were prepared to dive right in. I'm sure you were. Um, and Jennifer, what about you? Why do you do what you do? 
Oh gosh, I think Amy said it brilliantly. You know, um, we just encourage folks who don't know a lot about our organization to come to graduation. Obviously that's not being held right now, but hopefully we will have a graduating class in the springtime of uh, 2021. And we would love to see everybody up here to engage in that process of handing off the dog to its new owner. Um, from the time it's puppy raised with our volunteer puppy raisers to the time it goes home with its visually impaired individual, it's just life changing. And to be able to see that process in action and know that that person that received a dog got it at no cost, I mean, it's just, it really does continue on a daily basis to change their lives and make their lives better. And um, we just love the fact that we can be a small part of that and uh, work with the dogs like like Nancy here behind me on a daily basis and, um, you know, do what we do because we, we just, we love it. It's, it's amazing work. Well, you can see that both of you are meant for it, that you love it. It's super contagious. I'm really excited about the puppy shower. Please keep me posted on that. And of course, when graduation times, I'd love to do something like this again to encourage people just to continue to learn more and get more involved as well. Thank you both so much and kudos for all that you do for, um, for our community and for these animals as well. You guys are heroes. Thank you. <laughs> All right, you two, be well. We'll be in touch soon for that puppy shower, okay? All right. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Katie. <laughs> and uh, thanks to you all for tuning in. I don't know about you, but it just, it felt so good to hear those stories. I mean, right now there's so much happening in our communities, in the world. And so to watch these folks who continue to do this amazing, amazing work just inspires and motivates me. And I hope it motivated and inspired you as well. Uh, reach out to Guide Dogs of the Desert. Um, I can put their little banner back up. <laughs> there it is. Um, help out your community each chance that you get. If there's a way that I can help you professionally or your business or your nonprofit organization, please don't hesitate to reach out. That's why our chamber is here. Um, and we're just so excited to continue to um, help lift up the community in any way that we can. Until next time, we'll see you again soon at Live with Your Chamber. Take care, everybody. Mm -hmm.